Hello and welcome to the Raid Perspective Guide to 10-Man Heroic Yursage. On the heroic version of Yursage, he will summon one additional ooze to be absorbed. This makes understanding what each ooze does more important. When absorbed, the green ooze will cause nature damage to random members of your raid. So long as you're spread out, this ooze doesn't really pose much of a threat. From what we've seen, your Saj doesn't target melee with this ability, allowing your melee to stack. The red ooze will cause a variable amount of fire damage depending on your distance from your Saj. Make sure that everyone is stacked directly in the center of your Saj's hitbox whenever you have to absorb this ooze. The black ooze will grant your Saj the ability to spawn adds that fixate on members of your raid and do shadow damage. As soon as these adds spawn, you'll want to focus on taking them down as quickly as possible to reduce the stress on your healers. Because these adds focus on random members of your raid, whenever they're up, you'll want to stack. The blue ooze will cause a mana void to be spawned, which will drain all of your casters of all their mana. When the mana void is destroyed, all the mana therein will be redistributed within 25 yards equally among the raid members. There's a trick to easily overcoming the blue ooze and in turn the mana voids. After the first mana void spawns, use all of your mana regeneration cooldowns possible. You'll want to get the mana void low, but you don't want to kill it until another mana void spawns and drains your casters of mana again. This will allow you to quickly regain your mana every time and make the blue oozes a non-issue. Just make sure that you already have the mana voids low before the next one spawns. If you're reaching the end of the fight and are going to soon focus on the boss, you can actually completely avoid killing the last mana void, giving you more DPS towards the boss. The purple ooze is one of the most difficult aspects of this encounter. This will cause a debuff to go out that will last for 25 seconds each time it's up. When specific direct heals are placed upon a target with deep corruption, they gain a stack. When they reach 5 stacks, they explode. The key to overcoming this debuff is strong direct heals. Certain heals won't add stacks, making some healers more capable of handling deep corruption than others. You'll want to take a hard look at the two healers you'll have for this fight. This list includes heals that will not add stacks. Because of this, Holy Paladins and Resto Shaman have an advantage with their strong single target heals as well as a couple of abilities that won't cause stacks. Keep this in mind when you're setting up your groups. I'd recommend putting your tank, healers, and melee in group 1. Your strongest single target healers should focus on group 2. If you're lucky enough to have a Holy Paladin, have him put a beacon on the tank. And if he's healing group 2, which should be taking more damage, those strong direct heals will go straight into your tank, free of charge. The yellow ooze will cause your Saj to use his abilities twice as often and increase his attack speed by 50%. Because you'll be absorbing 3 oozes, this makes yellow really devastating. In this guide, there's only one combination of oozes where I would suggest you absorb the yellow ooze. Really quickly, I wanted to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the tanks on this fight. You'll generally want to solo tank this fight, unless your DPS is pretty incredible. The absorbed tanks win out over the block tanks, especially DKs. They're really kings of this fight. As for the rest of your group makeup, ranged DPS are really strong here especially hunters because they don't have the same problems dealing with mana like the casters do. Okay, so here's a list of the six possible combinations of four oozes that you can get throughout the fight. The order in which you get the combinations is random, but you'll never see the same combination more than once every six times. Identifying which ooze to kill is really critical because you're not going to have a lot of time to take them down especially with the strategy that we use. I've marked each ooze that you'll kill with an X. There's three simple rules you can follow to identify quickly which ooze you're going to be killing. Whenever green is first on the list, kill green. If green is not first on the list and black is third on the list, kill black. When green is not 
first, and black is not third, kill yellow. With the oozes being absorbed, you'll always stack directly in the center of the boss's hitbox. The only exception is when you still have green present. Now let's take a look at your Sash as a whole. You'll want to front load your DPS as much as possible, because in the beginning, you won't have to worry about oozes. This will allow you to use some cooldowns on your Sash and get as much DPS out as possible. With this first combination of adds, we choose to kill black. The melee DPS will stay on your Sash, while the range go over to get the ooze. If we're ever worried that the ooze will make it to the boss, the melee will switch halfway through. Because this is the first mana void, our healers are going to pop mana cooldowns, while our melee DPS go and work on the void. Our goal is not to kill the void immediately, we want to save this void until another void spawns. With this next combination, we kill the yellow ooze, and once again the melee stay on the boss as the range go and take out the ooze. Because black is going to be absorbed this time, we're going to want to stack on the center of the boss's hitbox to stack all the adds together. Once our mana has been completely drained, we're going to want to finish off the mana void that we had gotten low earlier. Once we've gotten that down, we prioritize killing off all the adds with AoE. With the next set of oozes, we have the range DPS go to kill yellow, while the melee DPS work on the mana void, once again getting it low so that when we need to pop it, it's ready. And again, if ever the range are behind on the ooze, the melee go to finish it off. Whenever a mana void is about to be destroyed, make sure all of your casters are close enough to it so that they'll get the benefit of the mana when it explodes. Once again, this gives you the opportunity to work on the mana void with the melee. The melee can also choose to hold off and stay on the boss, and then just go and get the mana void once the range go to get the ooze. This next set has us killing yellow once again. This combination of oozes is extremely deadly. You gotta make sure that you're stacked directly in the center of the boss's hitbox once the oozes are absorbed. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the healers during this phase because they're limited by purple and they're receiving a lot of damage from red and black. The best thing you can do as a DPS to help them out is to kill the adds with your AoE as quickly as possible. With this next combination, we're going to go and kill green. Afterwards, we're going to stack and we're going to want to use as many raid cooldowns as possible. This really is an insane amount of damage and without the purple as a limiter, the healers can go nuts. If your healers are really struggling during this phase, it's a good time to use Heroism, Bloodlust, or Time Warp. This is the only time that we choose to absorb yellow. Because of this, we're going to get two sets of black adds. The second set of adds comes right before the next set of oozes. If your AoE DPS is good enough, you may choose to just sit there and AoE the adds down first. If you choose to do this, you won't have nearly as much time to kill the ooze, so you'll want to swap over all your DPS to finish it off. You may even need cooldowns to get it down. Obviously, with this combination, we chose to kill green and stacked up. One tip for the mana void, if it's out of range, is you can actually have a death knight death grip it into the group. We weren't aware of this when we killed the boss on this attempt, so if you have a death knight, definitely utilize it because moving around with red and adds can lead to extra damage that you're not going to want. At this point we went through six different combinations of adds. After that sixth set you can get any combination again. After the seventh combination of oozes just stay on the boss for the rest of the fight. You may choose to do this a set or two earlier if your DPS is good enough. I hope you found this heroic 10 man your Sage guide helpful. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to subscribe or take a look at some of my other videos I've made. And look forward to some more Raid Perspective guides in the future.